God, I pray. God, I fast. God, I come to church. God, I come to Bible study. All are great. But I don't want to get too prideful. I don't want to feel like I'm better than me. Oh, Lord, I'm grateful that I'm not like that church. I'm grateful that I'm not like that sinner or that sinful person. I'm grateful that I'm not like him or her or them or they. I never want to get into a place in my walk where I think I'm better than anybody because I'm not here to compare myself to anybody. That comes from a Pharisee religious heart and spirit. Where I think I'm better than that church or that person or this guy or that guy or I'm fasting better than them. That's what the Pharisees did. Lord, thank you that I'm not like this sinful tax collector. I pay my tithes. I do my fasting. But I'm thankful I'm not like him. And you see the tax collector, Lord, look at me. I'm a sinful person. Heal me, help me, restore me. You see how there becomes a difference because here's the thing, knowledge puffs up. We think we start to know a lot about the word of God. Now we start to walk in this thing where we're like, I'm so anointed. I'm better than everybody I'm talking to. And this is what we need to break in the church. I can't be like Peter, where I'm like, oh no, <laughs> that's, that's common, that's not me. But the spirit, the voice of the Lord said, rise, Peter, kill and eat. Rise, Peter, get your bread, it's time, this is your blessing, it might not look like it. I know I've been using you, but I'm challenging what it's like to do ministry. And some of us, we can't even break out in our calling or in our gifts because we're like, oh man, I don't know, because that person, you know, it's not how they're doing it. No. When you start to set your eyes looking like Saul onto David and stop focusing on God, this is where destruction comes. You know what the Bible tells us in the book of Proverbs? It says that pride comes right before destruction. You ever want to break that stuff? Get low. Humble yourself. Know who your creator is. Know who God is. And it's interesting because these aren't the messages I want to be sharing sometimes. But I feel like it's things that we need to break so we can really see it from a lens of how God really wants us to do it. I've seen people say, I don't want to go to that house because there's no camera, because the preacher ain't on social media, because there's not a lot of people going to the door. Some people don't even want to go to a prayer meeting unless pastor so-and-so shows up. Oh, it's revival. I'm telling all my friends. Uh-oh. I don't want where pastor so-and-so goes to. I want where the presence of the living God is. That's obedience. That's true obedience. And God's going to start shifting, dismantling the house of Saul that is growing weaker and weaker and the house of David becomes stronger and stronger. God is looking for people that are getting on their knees and saying, Lord, even if it's your crumbs, as long as it's from the crumbs, from the master's table, and Jesus is eating at that table, Lord, I'll take the crumbs. I'll take it. I'd rather have the crumbs from Jesus than a filet mignon from the devil. I want the crumbs from the master's table. I'll take a blessing because that healing isn't demonic, it's heavenly. I'm not out here operating like Simon the sorcerer that's trying to buy anointing, that's trying to buy the power of God. I want it because it comes directly from the Holy One. And that's a true heart from God. What's great is, yes, the enemy can give false power. He can give this demonic power onto those. But guess what? That power will not last and that power cannot prevail against the church of God. It can't. So we have to stay right with God because we know whose power reigns. You want to raise a healthy family? Jesus should be the center of that family. You want to raise a healthy church? Jesus should be the center of that church. You want a healthy lifestyle? Jesus should be the center of your heart. This is where we're going to start to have a heart check on what we're doing. Why do we do what we do? Am I not here to just serve 
myself? Am I really here to serve others? Because I know what I'm doing is going to be the, for the glory of God. I never despise small beginnings. Why? Because what God does is he gives us and blesses us things, visions, dreams in seed form. We want fruit. But God blesses us with seed. He gives us seed. It's up to us to take those seeds and water them daily. Have a hunger and thirst for Jesus every single day to water that seed and it eventually becomes fruit. We want God to give us bread. But he gave the Israelites manna. And this is where my patient got built up because when you, God gives you manna, which is in seed form, he tells you to take the manna and knead it and dough it and work on it and make it so that it turns into bread that you can eat. When God gives us a dream, when God gives us a vision, some people are out here, oh, please pray for me because you prophesied for me. In, 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 remember when we talked about it? You prophesied for me last month. It's not coming to pass. Please pray for me. I'm hurting. But now you're operating off a prophecy that isn't ready for you, that was given to you in seed form. And thank God he gave you that revelation in seed form because you know how to press towards the goal of the upward call of God on your life. And you know the fruit and the garden that you're building, but he's given you seed. Are you ready for it? Are you ready for it? Because when the prophecy comes, it says that even though it tarries, it doesn't lie. It comes to pass. But I can't try to build prophecy out of God's will. I know who I am in Christ. That's what we got to say. I know where God wants to take me. That's what you got to say. I know who, my, who I am. I know I am who, I, who he says I am. I know the gifts that are stirring up. I know the skills. I know my heart for God. And I know the vision that he has for my life. And don't let no demon or devil d deter you into a different path. If you can just stay humble, honor God, live in righteousness, I promise you his ways are better than our ways. His ways are better than the lies of other people's opinions on your life. 